In 1969, U.S. military officials set up a network of computers so that scientific institutions could exchange information electronically. In other words, their computers could talk to each other. It was called the Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, ARPANET. About a decade later, ARPANET began using a communication standard that opened the door to an extremely rapid expansion. In the late 70s and throughout the 80s, ARPANET connected with the National Science Foundation's network, which was connected with networks like Usenet and BitNet, and all these connections, linking computers and networks around the world, created what is known today as the Internet. The Internet is a vast, totally decentralized and global network that is continually changing and expanding. But it's not growing on its own, because behind all those computers are people. It's estimated that over 12 million people use the Internet every day, with an annual growth rate of 100%. In just a few years, the Internet has gone from being a place populated mainly by scientists, academics, students and techies, to a place full of regular folks like you and me. So, why has the Internet become so popular? Well, having instant access to just about any information you could possibly want is pretty irresistible. And there are dozens of different ways to find that information, no matter where it is. People have been using the Internet for years to exchange email. And there are tens of thousands of public forums called news groups on the Internet, where people share information, debate, and chatter about any and every topic you can imagine. Over the years, several methods of navigating the Internet have been developed. But the all-round easiest, most popular, and most visually exciting way to get around is on the World Wide Web. Using an extremely intuitive software program called a browser, you move through the web by clicking on hypertext links that can take you from place to place. You can click your way around the world in 80 seconds, or less. Cyberspace, the information highway, the internet. I know you're interested. You've been hearing about it, you've been reading about it. But with all the hype and information out there, hopping on the internet might seem complex and even a little scary. Well, I'm here to tell you it's a lot easier than you probably think. In this program, we outline the hardware and software tools you need and tell you how to find a good internet provider. We're focusing on providers that offer what are called PPP connections to the Internet because it's the most economical way to get the most out of what the Internet has to offer. After we get all that technical stuff out of the way, we'll hop online and check out some of the amazing things you can do and places you can go out there in cyberspace. Just a minute. I think Mr. Newby's here. Hey, Mr. Newby. How are you? I'm great. I, you know what? I think I'm ready. You ready to go surfing? Surfing? No, I, I, I thought you were going to teach me how to get on the internet. Oh, yeah. oh surfing on the internet. Yeah, yeah well, I on. got all the books my family gave me. I kind of get hooked in or turned on or wired or whatever. But what I really need is help. These books, I'm going to get a hernia. Hold on, hold on. Listen, getting on the internet is not all that tricky. Yeah, sure. Well, listen, it's getting easier every day, especially with all the advances in software. You didn't really need to bring all those books today. I don't know. They're pretty important. No, relax. They'll come in handy later on. But they'll make a lot more sense after I give you some basic information and teach you a few surfing skills. Yeah, but we're going to work that World Wide Web World thing, Wide huh? Web, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I guarantee by the end of today, you'll be taking your wife and kids surfing on the net like you were a pro. Yes! You know, it's going to be a lot of fun. But it's really also useful stuff to know because the Internet is the way we're going to be doing just about everything in the future. Yeah, well, that's what I want to learn, huh? Okay, well, listen, put your books down and take a seat behind my computer. Great, thanks. At the end of this program, we'll give you a list of World Wide Web hotspots, an index of sites that let you download useful internet software right into your computer, and other places of interest that'll help you become a more skilled and knowledgeable navigator. As you'll discover, the best place to find out about the Internet and how to use it is, in fact, the Internet itself. Wow. 
this is a powerful computer. Does that mean I'm going to have to buy a new one? Probably not. But it's important to figure out what you already have and what you're going to need. Okay, here's what you need. A computer with a mouse, a modem, some internet software. You'll need to find an internet provider, and you've got to have a phone line. If you've got call waiting, you'll have to disable it before you go online. And remember, if you're still in the market for a computer, make sure you tell your dealer that you'll be using it to access the internet. Okay, here's the hardware we recommend. We'll start with IBM-based PCs. Your computer should be a 486 with a DX66 processor and have as large a hard drive as you can afford, preferably 400 megabytes. And you should also have at least four megabytes of system RAM. RAM, that's random access memory. Right! And because of all the graphics you'll encounter on the net, I recommend eight megabytes of RAM or more. Now, most computers come with an operating system installed. What system do you have again? I'm MS-DOS Windows. Great, that's a good basic operating system that you can run additional internet software on top of. Additional software, oh, I've seen some ads for those. Is that like uh, net in a sack? <laughs> no, actually, it's internet in a box. And that's one option. That program and another one called Chameleon are packages or suites that include all the tools you need for the most popular internet functions. And there's a lot more products like those coming out on the market, and they only cost around 150 US. However, take a look on your screen and tell me what you see. Well, I see a couple of trumpets, or oh, a nice looking in, and something that looks like a gopher. <laughs> yeah. Well, would it surprise you to know that those are all reliable, user-friendly software programs that I obtained for free? Well, you stole them? I can't believe that that's illegal. No, newbie. I haven't broken the law. I'll tell you how I got them a little bit later. There are dozens of excellent freeware and shareware programs that run on top of Windows that are super easy to get your hands on. Of the tools you see on the screen, the most important is a shareware program called Trumpet Winsock. It's what's called a TCP IP program, and I'll explain what it does a little later. Some operating systems, like OS2 Warp and Windows 95, include TCP IP and other internet software that is ready to use. But remember, you can always add other software to these systems. The equivalent Macintosh setup is System 7.5, which comes with a TCP IP program called Mac TCP. If you've got an older model, you'll have to buy a copy of Mac TCP for around $40 US. And remember, there are Mac versions of most of the freeware and shareware programs we'll be using today. Now, what about modems? I've got a 9600. Is that going to be good enough? Hmm, it's time to invest in a faster modem. Oh, great. What's that going to cost? Well, actually, a good name brand internal modem isn't going to set you back too much. Maybe it'll cost you 100 bucks, more or less. Now, 14.4K modem will work fine, but it's the absolute minimum speed. For a little bit more money, I think you should get a 28.8K modem, because for now, at least, it's the best way to dial up your PPP account using your TCP IP software. Wait, wait a minute, the PPP IC, I soft, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, I don't see. You're <laughs> right, I better explain. Transmission Control Protocol over Internet Protocol, known as TCP slash IP, is what holds the Internet together. It's a communication standard that allows different types of computers to talk to each other by breaking up the information into packets and sending them on their way. And whether you have a Mac or PC type of computer, you must have a TCP IP program to make your SLIP or PPP connection to the Internet. Ah, yes, the PPP Connection, a great movie by Gene Hackman, late 60s. Hmm. SLIP stands for Serial Line Internet Protocol, and PPP stands for Point-to-Point -point Protocol. Having one or the other doesn't make a difference in terms of what you see on the screen, but PPP is considered technically better. With SLIP or PPP access, you and your computer have your own identity on the Internet. So when you buy a SLIP or PPP connection from an Internet provider, you're essentially being given a direct pipeline to the Internet ocean. Speaking of ocean, when are we going to take this surfboard out for a test drive? Mm, soon, soon. But first I want to take you over to my local Internet provider, which is the place that I dial up to make my PPP connection.
So if it's a local call, does that mean I get on the internet for free? Not exactly. Your phone call is free, but you need to pay an internet provider for access to a PPP connection. Now, because there's a lot of demand for this kind of service, you can probably shop around to find a deal that suits your needs. And since you live in a big city, you'll probably have a choice of national companies or smaller companies. So what kind of services should I look for in a provider? Well, do you want to email? Do you want to look at all those news groups? Yes. Do you want to download files into your own computer? Sure. Do you want to surf the web? Well, of course. Well, then you want a full-service provider. Yeah, the full meal deal, huh? Look for one that gives you a variety of plans. Some providers limit you to a certain number of hours per day, then start charging per minute if you go over that. Generally, it's better to get a plan that allows you a certain number of hours per month, like 60 or 100, and complete flexibility as to when you use them. And find out how many phone lines your provider has and how many users. A ratio of 10 to 15 users per line is a good rule of thumb. But if it's much more than that, you might find yourself sitting behind your computer listening to a busy signal. That'd be frustrating, wouldn't it? <laughs> now, let me get this straight. A provider gives you access to the internet. But what happens if something goes wrong? Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Technical support is very important, especially when you're starting out. Most companies will offer you some level of support, and a good provider will tell you how to configure your software. Many will also offer you a starter kit when you sign up that is all configured and ready to go. Now, if you're having problems getting your computer, your modem, and your software to work together in perfect harmony, ask around. You might have a friend who's a technical whiz, or your internet provider or computer dealer might have a service department that can send someone over and make sure you're hooked up correctly. And remember, no matter what provider or what hardware or software tools you use, the content on the internet is the same. Whoa! It's the only way to travel. I think I better sit there. Okay, you're, you're over here. <sighs> okay, now that was fun. Yeah, I must have taken a shortcut back. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ye now. Let's see. Uh... You ready to go? Yeah, you Ready bet. to get going? Okay, I'm going to close this internet window and uh -huh. get you starting right from the beginning. Okay. Okay. Now you've got your program manager up there. This is what happens when I just start up my computer, right? That's right. Okay, now open up your internet program group. Open up the, it says internet. Do -do. Double click. That's right. There yeah. you go. Yeah. No, don't tell me, don't tell me. Right. Uh, I'm going to open Trumpet Winsock. That's right, that's your TCP IP program. It's like the same Windows environment. That's right. That's what makes these programs so great to use. They all operate in a friendly Windows or Mac environment. Okay. So click on Dialer. Dialer. Log in. Log in. It's dialing up all on its own. Great. Now... Watch what's on your screen. It's, it's answered? That's right. So I'm like, I'm on the net? That's right. What? This software is configured to dial up, log in, put in your password, and make your PPP connection all automatically. Great. So uh, what's next? Okay, well, you have to minimize that Trumpet Windsock program. Okay. Minimizing. It's always got to be running in the background while you run the other programs. Mm -hmm. So there are your icons for the other functions. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, how about that World Wide Web place? Web surfing. OK, well, open up Netscape. That's the net browser that we're going to be using today. OK, oh, it's opening. And you'll see it's taken us right to the Netscape homepage. This is still Windows environment as well, huh? That's right. Excellent. Now, you'll see at the top there, uh -huh. it says Netscape, welcome to Netscape. Underneath, and this is a part of the program, mm -hmm. are the various commands. Underneath that is a toolbar of the yeah. various functions. Oh, what are these buttons? Uh, what's new? What's cool? Well, those will take you to other pages at Netscape. But why don't you click on one and see what happens? Um, what's cool? Sounds good. Oh. Now, everything in blue type, or with a blue box around it, is what's called a hypertext link. When you click on one, it will take you to another page at that website or to a completely different website. In essence, you can follow your instincts and your interests when you're browsing. And I see you've taken us to the homepage of Federal Express. 
Oh, great. Let's see what it says about the FedEx. Track a FedEx package. You'll be able to follow your package's journey even while it's still in transit anywhere in the world? Wow, that's great. So is the web just about big business? Not at all. The World Wide Web, like the Internet itself, reflects the spectrum of human interest and endeavor. You know, it used to be totally uncommercial, but because there's so many easy and intuitive ways to move around, and because millions of people are getting hooked up, everybody wants to set up shop on the Information Boulevard. Well, let's take another journey, huh? Sure. Uh, now, isn't your wife Helen interested in art? Yeah, when we're on vacation, she's always dragging me to some museum or art gallery. Well, I'm going to show you how you can take Helen to the Louvre. Let's go. Now, that's a site I like to return to again and again. So I've saved its location in my bookmarks section. So click on bookmarks and click on web museum. And we're at the Louvre. There's the Mona Lisa. C'est bon, c'est magnifique. So do all browsers look like Netscape? Well, they're all a little bit different, but most of them allow you to perform the same internet functions. Some of the other popular browsers include Cello, Mosaic, Air Mosaic, WinWeb, and MacWeb. The Chameleon package comes with a browser called Web Surfer, and OS2 Warp comes with Web Explorer. Netscape is one of the best and most popular browsers around and is available for PC, Mac, and Unix workstations. There is a commercial version of Netscape available. Because the people who develop Netscape are continually updating it, you can download a version for free from various computer sites around the world. Wait a minute, I was just thinking, if you're connecting to all these computer sites around the world, isn't there a danger of catching one of those weird viruses that could nuke your computer? Yeah, there are a lot of nasty viruses out there. But you can protect yourself by getting the latest in antivirus software using something called FTP. FTP? File Transfer Protocol. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> Say you're looking for lyrics to a song you can't quite remember. Maybe you want to find out the latest research on global warming. Or perhaps there's a software program you need. There are thousands of computer systems around the world that let you log in and download files right into your own computer using something called File Transfer Protocol, FTP. Since you're so worried about viruses, I'm going to show you FTP by getting you to log into a site that will allow you to download some useful antivirus software. So the tool we're going to use is Winsock FTP. So open that up. Mm -hmm. And you'll see a window at the top of which says Session Profile. Now, we want to select a profile name. I have compiled a list of FTP sites. So let's go and find that site. Click on the arrow and search through that list for a site called McAfee. Right there, there it is. OK, highlight that. And before we click to it, um, notice that on the right-hand side of that window, there is something called Anonymous Login. And that's the login script that will allow us to connect to that site and download some software. Okay, so click on OK. OK. And if you look at the bottom of that window, you'll see messages that tell us that we are connecting to McAfee. We're just Whoa. about connected. Yeah. Transfer complete. OK. Now, take a look at that window. On the left-hand side, it says local system. Those are the directories and files on your local system. On the right-hand side is remote system. And in this case, it's a list of directories and files at McAfee. The top half of that window gives a list of directories. You see that bin, dev, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. The one we want to go to is pub, because that's public files. So double-click on that. We're heading for the pub. We certainly are. OK, now look, you'll see a list of further subdirectories. And at the very top of that is a subdirectory called antivirus. And that's what has all the antivirus software programs. So double click on that. 
And now you'll see the bottom half is filled with a list of software programs. Now, scroll through that because there's a particular antivirus program. There it is, Kill Monkey. Let's download that. And it's being transferred to our system. Great. Now it's you've easy. got a brand new antivirus program. Do you feel better? Yeah, and safer too. You know what I want to do now? I want to send some email. I've got this brother-in-law, Frank. You know, it's always email, this email, that. I want to send him some email. I even have his email address. Very good. Okay, well, what we need to use is a mail reader program. And the one we're going to use today is called Eudora Mail. So click that open. You'll see along the top there, there's a list of commands. And what we want to do is send a message. So click on message, then new message. Now on the to line there, you'll see the cursor is already there. Type in Frank's email address. Mm -hmm. Underneath that is the from line, which has my email address, because this is my computer system. Mm -hmm. After you've put in Frank's email address, move the cursor down to the subject line and fill in a short subject header. Then move the cursor down to the message area and start writing your message. Great. The exchange of electronic mail, or email, is probably the most common activity on the internet. Sociable users like to read and participate in news groups, which are kind of like electronic bulletin boards devoted to an incredibly wide array of subjects, from astrology and gardening and punk rock, to particle physics, sports, and zither playing, and everything in between. There are over 12,000 active news groups and counting. Now, most internet software packages come with a newsreader program, and there are lots of good freeware and shareware programs that you can download using FTP. Now, really sociable users can become junkies for something called Internet Relay Chat, or IRC. This is a form of real-time chatting that's used a lot for serious international conferences and business meetings, but it's also become the internet equivalent of a late-night coffee shop or you will never see your lawnmower again. <laughs> How do I send it? Just click on the send button and Frank will get it in minutes. Great. Yes. <laughs> this email is fun. Now, are there any neat websites for my kids? There's lots of great stuff for kids. But it's like television. You should be careful what they get involved with on the net. Now, I saved a great kid's site in my bookmark section. <laughs> Check it out. Look at all those graphics. There's stuff about their favorite TV shows, games, lots of educational things. This is great. I wish my daughter was here. She would love. Sarah! <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Wow, she's clicking that thing like a pro. Just click on anything blue that interests you. Wow, look at that. That's great. Now, I know you're having fun, Sarah, but have you finished your homework? Whoa, I wish it was this easy at home. <laughs> you know, I think your son would really enjoy this NASA website. Are you kidding? So would I. Now that was a blast. <laughs> Where do you want to go next? Uh, you know, I, I don't know how to ask you this because I don't want to embarrass you or anything, but, uh, you know, is there anything on the web about, you know, uh, sports? Oh, sports? Yeah. Well, there's hundreds of sports sites. Uh, which sport did you have in mind? Hockey. Oh, I know where we can go. <laughs>
You know, I feel like going somewhere cool. I, 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 I didn't mean that cool. Can you take us somewhere on the, 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 the web to woo, 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 warm us up? Sure, why don't I take you to the hottest site on the World Wide Web, the Internet Underground Music Archive. Awesome. <laughs> Now that was rock and roll. Excellent, man. Oh, I better get going. I gotta get there by the provider and get a Hi. faster modem, because I'm gonna do a little surfing tonight. Hang ten, newbie. Oh, gee, newbie, you've got your books.